John again, and welcome to I Can Explain. This week we're going to be talking about The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly and its villain. The Crooked Man is one of the defining aspects of this book. He is excellently atmospheric, awfully cruel, and delightfully creepy, if delightfully can even be used in the same context as this guy. But, well, there's not much of a lead-in I can make for this, so let's jump right in. Our standard warning applies, here be spoilers. that make the Crooked Man as creepy as he is, and they fall under two general categories, aesthetics and enigma. When you hear a person talking about a villain or a character that they found particularly scary or creepy, mainly what they're going to be talking about is how the character looks, what they do, any associations that they have. All of that sort of thing is the aesthetics, and for the Crooked Man this is done really, really well. For a start, when he's described, he's only barely described. We get a couple of sentences, but what we get is more than enough to tell us what kind of character this is. He's old, he's hunched over, his, his face is unnaturally long and thin, his eyes are coal black. It's not a really comforting mental image. And what's even better, he's only vaguely described, so your overactive imagination gets to have fun. Anyway. His breakdown towards the end is also fairly gruesome. I mean, he's literally rotting, boils and sores, flesh coming off. It's, it's not pretty. And mainly what this does is to serve as a reminder of just how wrong this character is. But that's about all you can really say for his looks. I mean, there's not much you can say beyond he looks really creepy and when he starts decomposing it's disgusting. That's about it. However, Connolly makes absolutely sure that nothing this character ever does feels like something a rational person would do. I could go on about all of the stuff that happens in the early part of the book, but that all falls more under enigma, so I'll leave that until later. Let's just say that there's a lot of popping up, saying something that sounds vaguely like a plot hint and then disappearing again. I don't know, what the Crooked Man does, the pleasures in the little things later on, like the network of caves running under the entire kingdom that he can appear and disappear from at will, or his habit of stealing the noses of the victims that he kills. Or, you know, the stories later on about him, like the one where he force feeds a man molten gold until that man dies. You know, the little things. Actually, there's a really interesting conversation with David about eh, halfway-ish through the book. And David proves a little bit too resistant for the Crooked Man's liking. He starts threatening him. I have walked through your dreams. I know everything that you think, everything that you feel, everything that you fear. I know what a nasty, jealous, hateful child you are. That's fairly creepy. But a minute later, he's offering David a deal. And all I ask in return is one small thing, so small that you won't even miss it. That sounds really too good to be true, and the fact that he's withholding the information makes the reader never ever suspect that he's actually being altruistic. This suspiciously nice vibe carries through the whole thing. He's always offering David this deal. He's protecting him, and while we see him gloating about the prospect of Georgie Pudding and Georgie Pie, and he's never offering David or the reader enough information that we ever feel completely safe. We always feel like he's hiding something, or that there's something not right. And finally, getting into the slightly less concrete, the associations that, that Connolly draws around the Crooked Man. Eh, mainly spiders and horror. Spiders is pretty self-explanatory webs, tangled things, darkness, eats, smaller, crunchier insects, but they're by far the only insect that the Crooked Man is associated with. His underground cavern is full of bugs of pretty much any kind, and when he finally dies he dissolves into a mass of miscellaneous bugs. So spiders aren't the only one, but they're certainly the main one. The horror stems from the fact that the Crooked Man is basically an embodiment of fairy tales, especially the less pleasant ones. 
David, David's mother's comments at the beginning about how fairy tales force themselves from their world into ours because they need people to read them to give them life. That's basically referring to the Crooked Man. And once you get further into the book, you realise that the Crooked Man basically represents the rotten core of fairy tales of the style that Jonathan Tolvey used to read. So that's the aesthetics. Now the good part. Because let's face it, any villain can look creepy or act creepy. The real skill is in how you build them up. This is why any villain can be cruel to children. But monsters Johan will always hold a special place of terror in my heart. And Connolly's very definitely gone for the they'll scare themselves much more than you scare them route with the Crooked Man. He's never directly described until about page 48, although he turns up either just in passing or thematically about seven times before that. Actually, if you go back and reread the book, have a look at how many times he's implied but is never actually on screen in those first 50 or so pages. I guarantee you, it is more than you expect, and I'm not entirely sure there is any scene in that section that doesn't involve him in one way or another. Also, he's always announced before he shows up until about mm, 60 pages from the end, and when he does show up, it's never immediately identified that it's him, again until right at the end and accepting some of his um, point of view sequences. This gives the impression that the Crooked Man can be anywhere and do anything. And he seems very inevitable. And as is probably obvious, there is nothing scarier than the thought that the horrible thing is unavoidable. Speaking of those last 60 pages, it's not actually until about then that we find out what's going on. Here's some quick numbers. My edition is 310 pages long. It's not until 158 pages into that that the Crooked Man turns up, has a conversation with David, and we find out that he wants something. Then it's not until 210 pages in that we find out what that something is, and it's not until page 262 that we find out what will happen if the Crooked Man gets it. That revelation is spread out over about four pages. On one hand, it's kind of impressive that Connolly manages to generate so much impact with an essentially motiveless character for most of the book, on the other hand, it's where his horror comes from. The reader is always generating more and more awful ideas about what he might want and what he will do with it. Of course, this type of character can be hard to pull off in the end, because the payoff seems small compared to what the build-up is. However, Connolly pulls this off perfectly. By the end, the Crooked Man is inventively cruel in both ways both new and common to fairy tales. He's never out of character, and there is nothing in the book that the reader thinks, no, no, that's too horrible, he wouldn't have done that. By the end, even the fact that his body is decomposing doesn't actually make him less threatening, because by then his awfulness has transcended the physical form he lives in until he is just a representation of pure hate and decay. So that's this week's episode of I Can Explain. Hope it was enjoyable and informative as usual. Please subscribe if you think that you might want to be subjected to this again. And my blog and Twitter are in the uh, description box, just in case you think I might say something else interesting somewhere else on the internet. Next week's I Can Explain will be about a story about stories. Thanks for watching.